The recent news highlights the impressive growth of digital payments penetration in Nigeria and other African countries, skyrocketing from 23% to 46% in under eight years. This surge signifies the increasing adoption of digital pl uh, payment platforms and solutions and their transformative impact on the continent's financial ecosystem. Notably, Nigeria's digital payments landscape has seen appreciable developments, including regulatory updates from the Central Bank of Nigeria to strengthen security and consumer protection measures. Leading the way in the Nigerian payments industry is Zone, driving innovation and shaping the future of payments in the region. And with a team of experts providing unique insights, Zone is at the forefront of navigating this dynamic landscape. This morning, joining us to speak more on this is Olaiwala Shoba, VP, Marketing and Corporate Communications, Zone. Thank you so much, Olaiwala, for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Super excited to be here. So uh, we can see that the growth is impressive from 23%, uh, but then how sustainable is this 46% penetration rate? And are there specific demographics or regions that are still set to be lagging behind? Um, yes, that's a good question. And, and, and thank you very much for asking. Um, I, I think that the, the payment space in itself has seen tremendous growth, if you ask me. And um, a lot of the things that are contributing to that growth, um, one of them would be the growth in infrastructure. We're seeing, you know, internet penetration, we're seeing um, smartphone penetration as well. Um, and how this space used to look like 10 years ago isn't how it looks right now. You know, um, even my grandmother actually has a mobile phone and she does, you know, payment transactions on her phone. So I think that's, you know, um, digital payments in itself has, um, you know, seen a lot of growth um, and from infrastructure growth to even, you know, entrance of, you know, new fintechs um, and innovation in general, you know, it's, it's seen that that space grow in itself. For us to sustain this growth, um, I think that we need to continue to invest in these things that I've actually called, um, you know, build policies or design policies that would continue to ensure that we see further growth in, you know, in internet penetration, um, continue to design policies that, you know, would also welcome more um, innovation within the banking and, 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 and payment space, you know, as the case may be. Um, is the growth sustainable? Yes, it is sustainable. But for us to even grow that even more within a short period of time, I think that, when they, they, you know, there is there is a need for us to have um, continued investments um, within these things that I've actually called that are contributing to the growth of, of digital payments um, in Africa. Uh, but then you will agree with me that um, when you look at some other regions and some other areas, most especially um, the rural areas, when it comes to penetration, it's not that uh, encouraging because, of course, um, they don't really have infrastructure spreading across those areas. And uh, we have some specific networks that are uh, network providers that can provide services if they are going to be banking online. So isn't that a major yeah. impediment or is Zone looking at um, different ways to go around that? Yes, um, thank you. Well, it was an impediment um, five, ten years ago, but today we have something called, you know, the USSD banking, and that speaks to to my point around innovation, right? Um, again, my my grandmother has a smartphone, but she uses the USSD feature to buy airtime, um, to even transfer money, um, you know, to, to 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 people or to make payments. Um, so yes, while um, internet penetration, even smartphone penetration, hasn't exactly grown as we would like to see it, especially in the rural areas. Um, you know, we're seeing fintechs and even banks are innovating, you know, to ensure that, you know, we're solving for these um, communities, um, you know, that would typically not exactly have the right infrastructure where, where, where that is concerned. So USSD banking in itself has seen um, tremendous growth to that. You know, it, it's, it's interesting because um, the value or the growth and the value of mobile money transactions in, two, in 2019, I think was about $3 billion. Um, but in 2023, it grew to an impressive $13 billion. Um, and if you ask me, I think that's tremendous growth. And um, we would continue to see innovation push um, for inclusion for all of these um, communities and areas that, that do not exactly have great internet um, services. As the case uh, OK, well, you stressed more about um, the USSD growing uh, in terms of what it can do and um, its usability. But if you are going to scale it beyond 46% in the coming months and years, there will be need to look at other areas or other modes of payment. So are there other types of digital payment platforms uh, that you feel we may need to also look into to contribute sig uh, significantly to this growth uh, that everyone is hoping for? Um, well, um, I would say that instead of looking to new channels, I would say, why don't we invest in existing channels, okay. right? Um, 
five years ago, we, you know, people would rather go into the banks um, to do payment transactions. But today, people would rather even go to a POS agent on the roadside than even go to an ATM, um, you know, than go to an ATM machine to withdraw, to withdraw money. So um, a lot of things are changing, right? And as things are changing, I think that instead of looking for looking to you know build something from scratch to solve for this problem um i think that we need to invest in the um platforms that we have to you know um help solve the problems um so that's what i would say i would say we invest in the current platforms that we have um pos as a channel is growing tremendously funds transfer in itself is also growing tremendously and i would say that um we invest in this in the existing channels um and uh, as i see that they can actually solve the problem and even continue to expand the growth of digital payment channels as the case may be Okay, so uh, Ola, Ola, has this growth in um, digital payments translated into greater financial inclusion for unbanked and underbanked uh, populations in Nigeria? And of course, we can still, uh, scale it out to Africa. Um, well, yes, it has. It has. And again, this actually brings me back to the, to, to the comment that I made about USSD banking. Yeah. Um, even in urban areas, right, I use USSD banking because it's convenient, right? And um, we see a lot of people in, in rural areas, you know, are also moving to using um, USSD banking. And, and, and what are we seeing, even with fintechs um, and, and the guys that are innovating in the payment space, you know, people are actually saying, how can we continue to grow this channel to ensure that, you know, it continues to serve people in undeserved community? Again, I said 2019 to 2023 is literally just four years. And for us to have grown mobile, the value of transactions have grown from $3 billion to $13 billion. That's really impressive. Um, mm. So I would say that, yes, um, you know, all of the things that we have right now can actually help solve, solve, solve for these things. So even as we begin to think about onboarding many people onto different um, platforms, uh, the issue around security will always come into the fore. And we know that despite CBN uh, regulations, there are still lingering security concerns among Nigerians regarding digital payments. Now, and, and of course, these concerns are big issues because a lot of monies are being lost. So what do you think can be done uh, to buff up um, of course, uh, for service providers to buff up or to beef up rather um, their platforms to ensure that we do not begin to lose money and lose data of uh, these uh, would be uh, customers. Yes, um, I think security is, is an issue. Security has actually always been an issue. Security will continue to be an issue because um, as companies and organizations are looking to innovate, um, to make life easy, to make payments easy, there are people who literally are also trying to innovate and be creative with how you know they hack the systems. Um, so that would also exist. And that is why as innovation and as technology as we're improving on all of these channels and as new, you know, innovative payment platforms are coming up, I think that a lot more investment actually also needs to go into security. Um, right. We saw the recent bill, um, you know, the recent um announcement, you know, about the cybersecurity fee, right? And while I understand, you know, what, what that bill essentially shows is there is a huge investment that really needs to go into security, right? And while, you know, we, we might not exactly agree with the way that they've gone into getting the funds to fund, you know, the, 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 the cost of, of building that particular infrastructure for security, um, I think that just shows, sheds a light on how security is very important, right? Uh, and, you know, this actually also focuses on the systems, you know, the systems that we have that are available. Um, I think that there's a huge investment that needs to go into, into security and, um, as people are thinking about, you know, how can we be innovative to make payments more seamless, more reliable, more frictionless, um, I think they also need to also continue to think of how they can ensure that, that these things are very secure. Again, because it's value, right? And um, for people and users to trust that particular system, they need to know that their, their funds and, 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 you know, all their money is actually secure. So there's a huge investment that also needs to go into um, security. And we see a lot of fintechs that are doing that today. Banks are, you know, they continue to improve, they continue to invest in security. Um, and even for us at Zone, right, we um, are a payment infrastructure company. And what we've done is we've built a reliable, frictionless, and universally interoperable system that, you know, that guarantees security at scale for financial service providers on our network. So again, um, for us at Zone, we're heavily investing in, in, you know, ensuring that we have a secure payment infrastructure. And, you know, we also um, think that other banks, fintechs, and financial service providers, you know, need to continue to um, invest in, in that as well. Okay, yeah, you talked about service um, providers coming into this ecosystem to invest. And earlier on, you also talked about fintechs coming into the fold, which means that digital payments is growing in Africa, not only Nigeria. But then a couple of weeks ago, uh, we had a report of about uh, between 90 to 95% of physical cash 
still in circulation in Nigeria, and that is a worrying trend uh, for the CDN and for Nigeria's financial space. So is there a clear understanding of how much cash is still circulating in Nigeria's economy, and is there a projected timeline um, for a potential cashless society? Um, yes. So as at uh, 2022, I think the Central Bank of Nigeria actually did say we had, um, I think, 3 trillion naira in circulation, and this was at the end of 2022. Um, but you see, for, for a cashless society, the CBN actually projects that we can have, we should have um, a considerably an economy that you can call it a, a, a cashless society at 2025. But you see, um, there is also the behavior of, of, of consumers and people, right, um, um, in Nigeria, right? And our behavior right now doesn't exactly promote, um, you know, that cashless society. But I would say that the CBN has actually invested a lot in ensuring that this happens. Um, and that's why we're seeing a lot of, you know, a lot of these things happen. Um, but I'll say one thing, right? Um, the cashless society might not exactly be absolute. And, and by that, I'm, I'm saying that I don't know that there is a time in the nearest future where we're going to have absolutely no cash in the society. But if you look at the trend, right, from 10 years ago to date, you'd realize that you know, digital channels, you know, are actually now contributing to the most, you know, to, to, to the way that people are transacting. Even bus conductors today, some bus conductors actually have POS machines mm. that they are using, you know, to, 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 to make payments. Um, so I have very high hopes that we would eventually get to a point where we would say that, look, Nigeria is truly a an almost cashless society. And I think that's how we need to start to think about it, an almost cashless society. But in the nearest future, at least for this decade and the next decade, um, I think that we'll still have cash in the, in the system, but we would definitely see, um, we'll definitely come to a time, maybe 20 years from now, 30 years from now, where we can say that Nigeria is an almost cashless society and the digital channels and platforms and banks and fintechs that we have today will play a very huge role to making that happen. CBN is already investing a lot in that space. Um, you know, they have policies that they've rolled out since 2012 that are actually helping that happen. So while I would say that, you know, we're gradually moving towards that space, I think I need to emphasize that it's not something that would happen overnight, um, but um, surely, you know, it would, it would, Nigeria would get to a point where we say Nigeria is an almost cashless society as the case may be. Uh, okay, so speaking more continentally now, because we know that Africa has a lot of developing countries and low income um, earning countries. Now, uh, how are digital payments impacting cross-border transactions uh, within Africa? And are there challenges or opportunities for further integration? Um, so, yes, I, I, I think that, you know, um, digital payments are actually enabling cross-border transaction. And, and I'm trying to remember the numbers. I think um, as at 2022, um, Sub-Saharan Africa alone, we got a remittance of about $44 billion. If if I think, if, if I remember that clearly. Um, and you see the things that are contributing to this are digital channels. You know, we have um, a lot of fintechs, you know, and even banks, you know, making cross-border transaction and payments easier. We're seeing a lot of companies also innovating. Now for us at Zone, by 2025, we would also be enabling cross-border transactions to happen. So we're seeing, we're seeing that channel happen. Um, we're seeing digital payment channels also contributing to the growth of, of you know, um, cross-border payments. And I, and I think that, you know, um, as we continue to move, up, move along, you know, this particular line of innovating consistently, um, I think that we should see a lot of growth in that particular space. Okay, so I'm um, looking ahead now, Alaiwala, what, what are the projected trends in digital payments for Nigeria and Africa? And are we going to see new technologies like probably blockchain or cryptocurrencies getting traction? Yes, um, I mean, there, there, there's a lot of excitement for the future. For us at Zone, we've built um, something that I like to refer to as um, a superior payment infrastructure, something that, that hasn't been done before, something that doesn't exist. And we're already using that to enable banks, fintechs, and OFIs, you know, to, to do payments. Um, we currently have, we launched with, uh, with our ATM switching, and, you know, we're seeing that in itself deliver reliable and frictionless operations um, where payments are concerned for these banks. Um, we're rolling out new use cases as well. For instance, you know, our, our, our POS, um, our decentralized um, POS payment infrastructure is actually also going to be launching soon. Um, so, so yeah, there's that to look out for. You know, blockchain is here, and we're using that in itself to enable banks, fintechs, and OFIs do payments in the in the most reliable way. Um, I think that one of the things that we can also look at, and this this is me going back to your question about you know um, a cashless society, we would soon start to see CBDCs, you know, play a huge role. You know, where digital payments are concerned. So, look out for CBDCs. Look out for um, decentralized payments as a whole. 
um, and there are a bunch of other guys who are also innovating across Africa. I don't know that we have enough time to actually delve into that, you know, but we have the likes of um, Cellulant, we have Zone, we have, you know, even all of the boys, um, the banks and fintechs in Nigeria too, heavily and heavily innovating, making payments seamless, making payments more reliable, making payments frictionless. Um, so I guess the, the trend that we should look out for is payments becoming more seamless, payments becoming more reliable, um, and, and payments becoming instant, as the case may be, across borders, whether you're in Nigeria, you're in Ghana, mm. or you're in Rwanda, and make a payment here, and it hits you know, the beneficiary's account wherever they are around the world, and it's instant. I think that's what we need to look out for, and that future in itself is very exciting and promising, if you ask me. Mm. And one of the probable beneficiaries will be with those within the um, SME ecosystem. I'd like to find out, because we know there are issues around language barrier, education barrier, investment opportunities not really coming through, and we know how cumbersome technology can be for people within this spectrum. Now, is there a way to simplify these digital payment platforms to make it more friendly, more easier to use uh, in terms of the interface and how um, the SMEs can actually harness the potential of having fluidity when it comes to transacting business using these um, digital platforms? Um, yes, I, 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 and, and if, if you think about it today, any, any store that you go into, they already have, a, they have their POS machines, right? Now, POS machines, as they used to work before, you can literally just receive payments, right? So someone comes into your store, they're done with their transaction, they plug in their card, and then the, 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 the merchant receives payments. But then now we see that, you know, there are fintechs out there who are even innovating, right? Your POS machine isn't just for receiving payments anymore. You can also do transactions on your POS machine. Um, again, I also alluded to, I also spoke about, you know, US, USSD banking. And there are also fintechs that are building, you know, for um, SMEs. And I'm talking about even the people who sell Pepe on the road, right? Mm. So, yes, innovation would eventually get to every touch point. Um, and I think that um, depending on, on who these fintechs and banks are building for, they would essentially tailor these things um, to ensure that, you know, their users can actually interact with them. But one thing that I would also say is the CBN, the banks, fintechs, and OFIs are also heavily investing in the education of, you know, how these um, digital channels and platforms can be used, right? And we've seen a lot of growth in that. Again, I did make reference to my grandmother, you know, mm -hmm. having a smartphone, but using USSD payment, USSD channels to make payments. And we will continue to see all of this as, you know, as these institutions continue to invest in educative program and awareness program for, for, for people, particularly in people in, in rural areas. And once all of this is happening, we'll continue to see the growth of, of digital payment channels across every touch point, whether it's um, person to person transaction or we're seeing it with merchants or we're seeing it with agents. Um, we're seeing a huge, you know, th there's a huge expectation for this particular space and everybody's actually going to be a beneficiary. And in the end, you know, the economy in itself would also benefit from, from all of this growth and progress that we're seeing in the payment space. And I tell you that a lot of people will be excited to see that um, Africa can be a par technology-wise in terms of these interventions and innovations coming through um, for it. Yeah. And we hope that that would be expedited in earnest. Olayi Wala Shoba, VP, Marketing and Corporate Communications Zone, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. And you too. Thank you.